What's this particular one? This is the that's a Savage Gear weedless head right. with a spindle worm body in Ayu, and it's got a flash of UV on the throat. Right. And in the water, I don't know if you'll pick it up. The, vis the line is nanofilm, and I find that really important because it's ultra fine. Right. So I'm not quite getting the speed, but it's got a lovely little body roll. Oh yeah, tail. yeah, I can get that. It flashes, the flashing. It's all about yep. the flashing. Right. Um, I put my finger to the line and I'm really sensing it as it drops all the time. Oh. We're in 21 foot water on the early flood. As soon as it touches, either five or ten fairly fast turns on the handle, back on, finger on, let it drop again. Or flick it up when it drops to the bottom. Pick up that slack real fast, get your finger back on it. Mostly happens on the drop. I think it's just we've got this May rock. Um, but it clouds the water in front. Uh, it they don't like it. Things, yeah. it's, uh, it reduces the visibility so they don't see the lure so well. Always a lovely pile of fish sitting behind the rock there. Um, it uh, apparently can deoxygenate the water when it's really bad. Yes. Um, well, it's decomposing uh, um, plankton, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. algae, yeah. It coats everything. So, uh, how do you determine the speed of retrieve? Because it, uh, it does change, it. doesn't it? From you feel it, yeah. You oh. absolutely feel it. Um, if you've got a lot of tension on, you really either don't want to be retrieving at all, but as soon as you get a slack, you want to. Um, don't, you don't actually ever want a slack. You can have a slight slack, you can give the lure its head yeah. so that it drops. Direct, yeah. just with a little push of the rod, um, but always you want to be a millimetre behind the lure because otherwise you just won't know when your lure's been hit. Yeah. And, and that's the bit I really drill into people: know what your lure's up to, because it's you, you can, you know. So a lot of people just stand there, just sort of reeling in, don't they? Don't think, don't think about it. Or, and it's it's not like that. Um, you got to. You've got to make your lure look attractive to a fish, obviously. And one of the ways to do that is this jerk, because it, each jerk tends to yeah. flash a different way. Yeah. And it's coming up advertising to the world, look, I'm here, I'm a little fish. Yeah. And the other, the other approach is kind of try and make it a secretive fish. That's the steady, very slow retrieve. Yeah. You know, bass seem to delight if they catch a fish by surprise. So fishing there, what I call happy fish, um, is just amazingly successful. You know, if, if all you want to do is chuck out something like a savage gear sandy or let it sink to the bottom, wind, let it sink to the bottom, wind, let, you'll catch a lot of bass. It, it, you don't need to necessarily do anything else and still catch bass. But it does depend on what, how hard they're feeding too, doesn't and it? And what they're feeding on and what they're up to and how much competition there is, how many are on their shoulder. A classic example of that was the other day I was out um, doing a feature and just like three days ago on the marina. Oh, mistake. And uh, on the drop. Yeah, totally. Um, I had a fish maybe 12 pounds, just slowly come up. Like looked like he was gonna take the lure, but it was one of those situations where I ran out of water and then I couldn't yeah. kick the lure with any momentum and it looked weird and the fish just turned up and went down. If he'd have had one on his shoulder, he'd have raced in and grabbed it. Yeah. And that's what we're up against these days is there's a lot more loner bass. There, there aren't, there there aren't as many bass as there used to be, yeah. <laughs> Tell me about it. So particularly, you've got to particularly make it look attractive. Um, and you, Mick got a sidewinder out earlier and you said don't use that. That's that there, yeah. Very, very heavy ground and a big proud hook. Oh, I see, yes, it'll get caught much yeah. more. Yeah, OK, so it wasn't about the sidewinder. And now, here now, now we've got... Well, we're on the top of the ledge still. We're drifting the right way, at least. We've got 35 foot of water. Uh, at the moment, we're on a very neat tide as well, which isn't great. But if we was here on a spring with a bit of wind on us as well, the sidewinder fish just without any weight or flying collar probably hasn't got the yeah. weight. The new ones are, are great, though. These... Uh, Again, weedless, perfect for out here actually. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Um, I think that's a sidewinder, and yeah, yeah, pretty sure it is. Uh, HTO Mighty Minnow. That's something I've got a lot of hopes for. Yeah. Oh, I see. Yeah. As well. What depth are we in here? Right? Oh, see <laughs> the Thirty-five at the moment. That's dropping at forty-two. It's less likely to catch in weeds because it's sort of exactly. set downwards. Yeah, yeah exactly. I get you. Yeah. Okay. 
And, and now, here, the rock isn't quite so heavy. It's a bit flatter because it gets battered by chains and that when the trawlers sort of drift onto it and just weather over the years and it's all eroded. But in there, tight to the marina, where it's in the lee of uh, the marina for some of the weather, some of the heaviest ground around. Yeah, it's yeah, well, I can crazy. imagine, yeah. Do you, yeah. Do you fish with poppers a lot in this market? Yeah, yeah, it? absolutely. It's just not so many fish around and not so many looking up. I've, I've, I've thrown a few around already. I've seen some surface action. Um, I suppose that depends on, the, you know, what bait fish is, is exactly. where that's moving, is not it? I think, you know, by September, it's just so rich with bait fish, the bass are quite happy to not look at much else. But early on, there's less bait fish, and I think a lot more prawning and crabbing going on. Do you, I mean, have you got a favourite rod you like doing this with? Absolutely. Well, it's in three pieces at the moment. Oh, is it? <laughs> why, um, why is it a favourite rod, though? I mean... Uh, it's a St Croix. It's, it's a very powerful, quite fast blank. Uh, St Croix Legend Elite. And it's awesome for getting good distances. But you can still, actually, the tip's sensitive enough, you can still fish a soft plastic in a river and, yeah. and know what's going on. So, yeah, awesome rod. But 500 quid's worth of awesomeness yeah. for everyone. And when you break them, it really hurts. Yeah. <laughs> I can imagine. Because, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, in terms of, the, you mentioned the tip of the rod. Yeah, giving I, you something I mean, this, with... this rod here is a heart Bushido. It's a pretty standard for the money, sort of just over a 100 pound rod. Yeah. Uh, the tip will go round, and, and I can see the vibration just about of that tail, yeah. just about uh, yeah. through the tip. Yeah. But little things like that are important. If you don't get vibration, you're not. Um, you're, good chance your tail's not working. Why is that? Maybe it's wrapped round, gone up. Oh. Maybe there's a bit of weed on it. So you should it's be feeling excellent ground now. We're just going over the drop off. So you should be feeling on it all, all the time when you're when you're all the retrieving time. for the for the all movement the of the tail, yeah. All the time, yeah. Okay. You want to know what your lure's up to. You, yeah. you want to know it's working efficiently. Yeah. And doing what it's supposed to do. And that's the other thing. A lot of people kind of buy lures, chuck them out and retrieve them, and oh, well, I'm not catching anything. Pretty much every lure wants its own little unique way of doing. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, well, there's a saying, isn't there, that, that, that quite a lot of fishing tackle is designed to catch anglers rather than fish. I think, I think the original, probably, uh, that's perhaps unfair on the people that invented I think the tackle. I, t I would agree with but that. Bad it's communication. It's like, it's like classic, it's the ba bass bullet. I was having this conversation online this morning, the bass bullet, Cox and Rule. Mm. Now we know what pencils and everything do, we're aware of what that could have done, but it, it appeared in, like, the late... Well, 90s, in the mid 90s, early 80s, late yeah. 80s, a, a piece of kit that if, if you never fished in America or Japan, you just wouldn't have a clue about. Um, they use them in Ireland. Yeah, well, they, people call using them wrong a lot of the time, I think. Uh, yeah. uh, I remember putting one on and banging it around and thinking, huh? This will never catch a bat. But in the shallow, I mean, all this is is an extension of what I've been doing for 10 years on the beach, really. Um, and a friend of mine had a little 16-foot strike liner in the marina. Yeah. And he said, so do you want to come out on this? And I was like, yeah, well, actually, yeah, we could just get beyond that colour, or I'm sure we'll do all right. And we did phenomenally well. Yeah. <laughs> um, and it sort of made me realise very quickly that if I'm loving this, on fly, on lure, yeah. then other people yeah, are yeah. doing it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and it's, it's a lovely, it doesn't step on anyone's toes. Our, our customers are very different to, uh, you know, there's, there's a marina full of, if you want to go and fish baits or if you want to go and fish wrecks. We've got a marina yeah. full of facility for that. So your new venture in, that's launching in later in the year, what, that, that's basically a guiding thing, it's isn't it? guiding yeah. a float, really, yeah. yeah. Um, oh, cool. It's myself and Bruce Dickinson. Yeah. Um, and I talked to him about it for, for a long time. I, I stepped up, I got the opportunity to borrow a 23-foot U-turn, I think it's a Norwegian mate, um, with a diesel inboard open boat like this. Um, and it, it was just such a lovely experience. I just can't ignore the, the quality of the fishing. It's, it's kind of yeah. worth the risk. And as the stocks decline, it's getting much harder off the shore. I mean, it really yeah. is. Uh, See that ground we're going over now? Yeah. Uh, it's lovely heavy ground with lots and lots of friends. Uh, yeah, there he goes. Whoa, look at that. That's got a nice tail, actually. They're, they're yeah. awesome. HTOs are awesome. I'm going to... Oh, that's nice. Yeah, that's good.
don't need a lot of encouragement for the tail. No, to the going tail looks, looks good, isn't it? Yeah. Lovely. And again. Oh. Nice. It's getting that Excellent. wobble as well. Yeah. You've just got to get the speed yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, wobble yeah. It. You can see that really nice little drop off there, yeah. Yeah, but so usually <laughs> you'd see a pile you'd see of fish, fish off on the it, other yeah, side of it. Today, yeah. I mean, I sometimes worry that even in a boat like, even depths like this, just moving about generally Definitely. and dropping yeah. things on the deck is concerned, try yeah. to be avoided because it's yeah. a bits of kit banging and twanging on like yeah. keys, good scrape, things like that. And it all goes through. Yeah. Yes, showing up around the sort of. Yeah, there he comes. Nice. Lovely. Tail, look at that tail, the colour is. Fabulous, isn't it? Love, lovely uh, and oh, sort of turquoise. Gone, it's unusual in such a little yeah. Perfect. Brilliant. Like this, yeah. <laughs> you like gear, and you get but a, loads you get of people a don't found bass, and you actually appreciate it. But loads of people don't even try, do they? I, I, it's in, I mean, you need to set up for it, you need to cast from the boat, it's, especially if you're on a chart boat. Yeah, many chart boats still aren't keen on you cast chucking things around. Uh, yeah, that's I true. Mean, Neil's quite cool at Spirit of Aaron. If, if I ask and if the crew are agreeable, he'll let me mess around. But most chart boats, if you pull a lure rod out and start putting a bit of heavy metal on. They get quite nervous. <laughs> they need to control their environment and their safety. You know, they're, they're operate, the chief safety operating officer on the boat. Yeah. So if it's something they're uncomfortable with, I totally understand them not wanting to do it. No. Yeah. Yeah, but in general, people, even anglers with their own boats, don't with tend to do boats. it a lot, do they? Oh, yeah, people should do a lot more of it. It's, it's just such good fun. Yeah. And of course, it's 99% catch and release, isn't it, really? Yeah. Well, certainly with bass, you can't. Uh, well, it's 100% at the moment. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, um, yeah I, very few fish get killed. I do encourage people to take to the table. Well, that's, yeah. Because um, I do believe if we stop eating fish that we catch, then we're entering the realms of fox hunting, like blood sport. Yeah, okay. Another yeah. nice way of doing this is with some metal, you just chuck it out, and then a little trick Neil French showed me t 10 fairly fast turns with a HTO Shore Duke. Take the treble off, put on a uh, circle, and uh, really good over rock. Oh. Snag up nearly as much as you'd think. Um, yeah. When do you know? When, when you know? When you see the bait shoals riding high, basically, yeah. uh, is, is worth. Because then you have fish looking up. Whenever they're looking up, in very shallow water, we fish some marks in like five, six foot water. Yeah. If it's if you've got enough clarity that they'll see it go over the reds, then even if they've got the heads down crabbing, they'll come, come up. up and have a go at it. Yeah, yeah. Early yeah. mornings always uh, seems to be productive, but the hole on the top thing depends on them getting, you know, seeing shoals of fish up and coming yeah. up and forcing them up. And so, so seeing birds working is a classic sign. But also, if you're on the if you're looking on the fish find, you on, see a bait. The, uh, you see the bait rising up. Yeah, yeah. Um, and when you see that, the rate coming up in the water, then, yeah, anything that's making a fish do that and be, be you know... Looking up, air. yeah, yeah, kind of full. And, I mean, you talk about poppers and stuff like that that you would My use on top. My favourite of all, in part because if customers lose them, it's not so upsetting, is probably the head and one knocker spook. Oh, yeah. Uh, and I particularly like chrome and silver, uh, chartreuse and silver, chartreuse and chrome, I think it's called. Oh. Um, and people say to me, why, you know, it's, it's not natural. That's kind of why I like them. The other thing that like surface lures is seagulls. <laughs> um, <laughs> yes, but yeah. Seagulls aren't as um, 
clever as, uh, sorry, bass aren't as clever as seagulls, thank goodness. Seagulls will see a bit of bright green chartreuse, and if you stop working it, they'll come and have a look and they'll go. Yeah, yeah. Anything natural, they're more inclined to pick yeah, it up, yeah. and then you've got the issue of you know, yeah. seagulls. They, they don't taste good, they don't fly that <laughs> <it> well. <laughs> Just leave them alone. And they'll pet your eyes. Yeah, I've had them in the boat, and they're not, it's not pleasant. They carry diseases, yeah, it's yeah. better not to interact with them. Yeah. No, it's better it not to hook them, and the best way is to fish a bait that's unattractive. Yeah. Panic prey, savage gear panic prey, I love that lure as well. It gives you extreme, I use it a lot for the shore. Really good distance, and of course it, it, it's very similar to the pachinko, as everyone's quick to point out. Except in the price. Stinking the panic prey is like seven quid a pop, mm. I think. The pachinkos you're paying, what, 20, 20, 28 quid, depending on what one you buy. Um, yeah, I've, <laughs> I've used both and I've caught on both, mm. but wherever possible, if, if Sometimes buying budget is a mistake because the quality of the components aren't up to it. Well, that's yeah, self-evident, I suppose, isn't it? Somewhere. But if you if you find something that's reasonable quality, you know, just because it's not got a brand on it, I definitely would recommend to try it out. Dam are just bringing a load of stuff out in the in Europe. E Eve set. Mm. They've got some really interesting stuff there. Some little minnows that look interesting for a lot less than, for example, a fish minnow. Fish minnows are brilliant. They're absolutely stunning lures. These are the ones we were fishing with in France, actually, because yeah. they sponsor the barracuda thing. So yeah, they are awesome. Yeah. yeah. So that's that's the one knocker. Right. I like the clear ones. Spook. Yeah. I find that they get really make them angry. Yeah. I to give it an opportunity when there's some bass around. It seems we get our bass last here for some reason. So the Nenafil is, is a fussy line. Um, is that what you... That's, what that's you're... Nenafil, Barkley Nenafil. Oh. Uh, it's a brilliant line. It's got a really undeserved bad reputation. It does two things that aren't good. Um, if you don't double it when you knot it, it's so fine it slips. And the other thing it does, where you're casting constantly, where you reel up and cast, yeah. it will fray here. Yeah. Um, but actually, it's much better. Um, sorry, much right. better uh, abrasion resistance than braid, in my opinion. I've, I've had, only had bad experiences with braid, fish touching rocks. Whereas I can tell you a few, including a 13 and a half in a really powerful river, with the fish going around a concrete support out in the river on the, on this 0.17 nanofield, and, and I landed that fish. And on braid, I don't think I would have landed that fish. So when, when I have an opinion on something, it's, it's always because I've seen it with my own eyes rather than speculation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's how I see it. I, I, I think this is miracle line. You don't get the wind knots if you've... I always said you don't get wind knots on Nanofield. And then I had it on uh, Pen Battle 3, the latest Pen. No, yeah. not Battle, Slammer 3. It's a 170 good reel. Lovely reel, gorgeous reel. Really smooth, like, really feels like one of these, really solid. But the spool's just that little bit squatter and narrower. And uh, the Nanofil and that reel don't like each other at all. But on these Spinfisher 5s with this fairly extended spool, yeah. beautiful spool for distance. All, all, all my gear is for distance, basically, yeah. um, on, because it's inherited from my shore, shore guiding. Um, and this, this reel just doesn't let you down. Pen, pen Slammer 5, uh, Spinfisher 5, it's just uh, reliable as hell. Um, but for pure reliability, if you hook a fish on one of these, you know the drag's going to work, you know nothing's going to lock up, you know the bearings aren't going to seize on you. Well, uh, yeah, that, the drag on fixed ball reels is the most... Yeah, over. I love that, yeah, no entry. Ah, so that, that one, there's no back one no on back that one. at all? Why, why do you need if it? If you try and use a back one with a fast fish, you just hurt your fingers <coughs> and, and end up probably not keeping up and the line will go anyway. You have to have a real, with a reliable drag to fish no back one. Back winding is a, a symptom back from the days of carp fishing with things like the Mitchell 300s. Ah, <laughs> remember yeah. them well. Yeah, that's when the, when still got mine. So these are what those are. Imagine those are catch plays. Oh, yeah. The jig is your weight. Uh -huh. So basically, yeah, what you're doing there, you're tying oh, up. I see. Right, of, just a tying a size two Aberdeen. Yeah. Onto a bit of line. Right, if you're wrong. And then I'm taking off that nasty, very rotten <laughs> single off this two ounce casting jig. Right. And using that as the weight. Mm -hmm. 
Why? Because it adds to the attraction. Oh, oh that's It's all about flash. Cool, okay. It's very simple fishing as well. Anything we do on this boat needs to be simple because we need to swap people around. Yeah, and yeah. So I'll literally tie that quite short. Yeah. On the back. Yeah, I've got one here for you, Michael. Yeah, thank you. All right. Right, so you're hanging the ice home off the Just bottom. clip that on that. Oh, ice home goes. Right, what do I need on my end? I was intrigued by that. Clip piece right, yeah. yeah. I thought that was really good, because uh, I'm going to try this uh, fishing. Oh, in the I see. End. So you just Put it on pretty it, much like yeah, a rag. Like you know. rag run, yeah. Just get it on enough that the head will go over the eye and then it'll just hold nicely. The more towel you get, if you just head hook it, you'll actually get more bites, but less hookups. some movement and so I pull the bait and I drag it forward and then I stop, I let it settle back down and I let the current move the boat until that tightens up and then once it's tightened up around here I move it again, prop again right. and all the time that's on the bottom is um, because there's so little current actually what I'm doing is I'll retrieve Stop, let it settle, pick up the line. And down below, that's going stopping. Oh, right, so the tail looks like a ragworm it's wiggling along. It's bouncing around. When you do that drag, it's actually moving fairly vigorously. Yeah. And then when you stop like that, the tide will just roll it to one side. Or, you know, very, very attractive. We've done a lot of work with the water walk to develop. Oh, yeah. It turns fish on with the isomes. Oh,